thanks growth in terms of their balance sheet dynamics. Uh, again, the India business, they've obviously seen the, an acquisition of the addition of the Zohetis portfolio, and it's very, very organic. So I think what you're probably seeing in terms of uh, margin expansion, in terms of expectations of earnings growth, that should probably uh, continue. And, and net debt should keep on for the margin of safety. So yes, I think uh, sequent probably becomes a, a good hold at this point of time. Uh, as far as care ratings is concerned, uh, Again, I think the entire transformation strategy that is expected to continue, I think they've got a lot of changes at the top. Uh, uh, how that probably takes place uh, is something to be seen. But I think they've got uh, technological tie-ups. Uh, they've tied up recently with the US firm Tresata, which basically is into more of uh, automated software, uh, which probably will give them a fair sense of clue in terms of risk management and risk profiling of a lot of corporates that they probably track. Uh, in expectations in terms of uh, industry credit growth uh, and end sector demand as well, the expectations that uh, the management probably have post their con call is that wholesale credit is expected to pick up gradually and that should have uh, greater uh, support in terms of more debt issuances coming up and bond markets are expected to remain stable as well. Uh, so I think uh, uh, weak debt markets uh, have probably been a uh, uh, reason for these rating agency stocks to probably be showing a sideways move. But going forward, I think it probably seems very, very optimistic with all these factors coming and helping them in terms of earnings uh, and, and overall return ratios. Okay, uh, the next query comes in from Mr. T. Radhakrishnan and he's on the line with us from Bengaluru. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. How can we help you today? Yeah, I have 168 info eight, but uh, during last one year, at an average price of 4,000 rupees. Whether should I hold it, continue to hold it, or book profit now? Okay, uh, you have shares in InfoEdge, right, you said? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Mayuresh, first to you, because just today uh, there's been a CNBC TV 18 exclusive news story that, uh, you know, InfoEdge is likely to divest part stake in the Zomato IPO. Uh, given that uh, things could be on the fast track here, what would you advise a retail investor to do? No, so I think the investor can hold on. It's a classical uh, growth uh, stock and uh, we at O'Neill uh, probably like uh, growth uh, stories where earnings momentum keeps on uh, improving quarter after quarter and on an annualized basis as well. Having said that, I think when you're probably looking at the numbers, I think uh, there were a few elements which are amiss in these numbers, but the management probably is looking very, very optimistic uh, in terms of billings coming back uh, to pre-COVID levels as far as its flagship uh, uh, sector exposure of Nokri or the job portal is concerned. So the expectations because of the second wave is uh, that second half should show significant amount of traction and recovery and billing should come back to normalization levels which were a tad bit below pre-COVID levels as well. Uh, the second aspect obviously is the real estate arm, 99% that is also seeing some amount of uh, uh, viewings and because of the convergence that you are now seeing specifically in the real estate sector per se and the interest generated thereof, uh, I think that part of the business should also start uh, performing well. The optionality, as you rightly pointed out, Sumaira, comes in through the uh, Zomato IPO. Valuations, again, uh, as your uh, uh, news uh, team was breaking the uh, story as well. I think if those valuations sustain and whatever they can get out of that valuation as well, it adds to the cash buy. Along with the stakes, they've also got in, uh, uh, in, in uh, upcoming unicorns like Policy Bazaar. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot of optionality on the table for shareholders as well. So continue holding the stock. Uh, as per our methodology, I think the 50 DMA, I think, is one level that he can probably look at, which is close to 4,700 odd levels, which can be monitored uh, as, as uh, something where uh, exit signs can be given. But I think Vaishali can give you a better picture. Hi, welcome back here with your stocks. Our two experts are with us. And the next query comes in from M. Krishnan, who has written to us from Chennai. He says he has 2,000 shares of Gale, which he has bought at uh, about almost 160 bucks. And he, now he wants to know if he should remain invested. What is the outlook? Uh, Mayuresh, do you have a take on Gale? What should the investor do? Yeah, you can continue holding on. I think what is uh, probably happening is that gas uh, EBITDA margins uh, should slowly and steadily start inching higher. Uh, They've contracted almost 80% of their capacity, while well, 20% is probably not tied up. Uh, that is what their call call specifically mentioned, that they want to make use uh, of this 20% that they've kept open because of the spot LNG prices, which have actually, actually exceeded 10, 10 and a half dollars uh, per, per MMBTU. So I think uh, 
the, the leverage that they'll probably get with those spot prices would work in their favor as far as the cat's uh, uh, EBITDAs are concerned. On the gas transmission, I think uh, they guided for a 6 to 8% growth over the next couple of eight years, uh, for the next couple of years. Uh, and again, largely is that uh, with more plants coming through, specifically in South India, fertilizer-based plants and other others as well, uh, you can see more volumes pick up. Uh, and therefore, the transmission volume business should remain stable and improve thereafter. Uh, the pet chem part of the business, uh, so is a little bit disappointing in terms of the volume guidance. Uh, around 810, 820 KT is what they're probably expecting. And there was a shutdown in their plant at Pata in, uh, in this quarter. So I think uh, Q1 will probably see an impact because of the plant shutdown at their Pata plant. Uh, but overall contracted volumes because of the shutdown are going to be lower uh, year on year. Uh, uh, dividend yields fantastic at 3.5% odd percent. and therefore I think uh, if it's a medium term investor, I think uh, there is still expectations of earnings growth coming through. But again, I think uh, earnings and price strength should both start coming through. And as they start coming through, the EPS rating and RS rating as per our own methodology should start catching up. But uh, that's the hope. But at this point of time, at least uh, you can hold on to the stock with the expectation that all these things work in their way. Okay, uh, Mayuresh, uh, you know, earlier this week, there was news that uh, the emergency credit guarantee scheme uh, would be expanded by one and a half lakh crores, something that would benefit a company like Bandhan Bank. Uh, you think there are enough triggers, uh, you know, for a retail investor to remain uh, invested in the stock? Or do you think, like Vaishali said, that perhaps start uh, exploring other opportunities? Okay, definitely. Proforma numbers. Uh, let's take into example for Bandhan the GNPAs. On a proforma basis, asset quality uh, seems to improve, but I think they have seen deterioration of almost 7 odd percent quarter on quarter. Uh, they have added or increased their provisioning, which was a must because of the pressures that they are probably seeing and the elevated slippages of almost 3,900 crores that they probably reported. Uh, now 67 percent or 70 percent of their book is still exposed to microcredit or microfinance, as we call it. Uh, and therefore, lending specifically in the second wave because Recoveries uh, is definitely going to take time. States like Bengal, Assam are going to face challenges, and therefore, uh, I think the kind of uh, cost income ratio increases that you're going to see an increase in credit costs uh, that's going to take a hit in terms of reported earnings and the reported book value as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, it's going to test a lot of patience, uh, but my own sense, like Vaishali, is that uh, look out for more opportunities in the broader markets. At O'Neill, uh, I think we like great industries. I think it's a typical growth oriented stock. Uh, it's a brilliant story with three quarters of increasing revenue and earnings growth. Uh, ROE is Okay, I think uh, that's an unstable connection uh, that my Raish has. But uh, Mr. Agarwal, I think basically you've got the gist of what our experts are recommended, that you can hold it for now, but do start exploring other opportunities. Uh, the final query today comes in uh, from Krishna, who's a student. He's written to us from Vijaywada. He has 50 shares of GMM Fortler, which he has bought at 5,300 and 29 shares of India Mart, which he has bought at 7,200 plus. Now wants to know whether to hold, book losses, exit, what should uh, he do at the moment. Mayuresh, first to you, both GMM, Fordler and India Mart. I think platform-based companies, right, specifically companies like India Mart, uh, and they've seen a fabulous run-up, though I think the uh, correction in the stock was very, very obvious over the last few months. Uh, but I think it's a very, very stable model as far as the B2P business is concerned. Uh, the expectations largely laid out is that top-line growth should be very, very stable, cash flows remain extremely strong. Uh, and because of the model in place itself, I think return ratios should remain strong. Uh, so, yeah, I think... Uh, can get invested, but I think the RS rating has actually come up. So I think uh, hold on, but uh, you'll have to have a lot of patience in terms of the up move again. Uh, for GMM Fortner, unfortunately, Sumera, we don't have coverage on that stock, so very difficult to comment on. 